25 summers. We back. So you say New York wasn't made for gangs. Explain to us what you mean by that. Nah, New York, New York wasn't made to hold the magnitude of what the gang represented. The gang started in uh, California. And like I said in one of my other segments, this was a way of life for these brothers and everything, man. <clears throat> New York City wasn't ready for no wave of no gang by any culture, any set of stretch of the, mem of the mind, and especially the bloods, because the foundation to it wasn't set, it wasn't sanctioned, it wasn't given the green light, okay, so it's all based on one man's ideology theory and the belief the fact that he can come and do it and start it. So it was already designed, destined to be failure from there. But being that I, I already let you know in the segment, man, about the cowardly acts and these things that these moop loving dudes be loving to do and all of that. There's also a flip side of that because they all wasn't rats. They all wasn't hiding in population, hiding in the box and all of that. But I want to give homage and show, and, and show some do and give the brother his flowers to the brother T. Rogers because he's the uh, founder and the forefather of the Bloods. And what he stood for and what he wrote with his co-partner Bobby Lavender was brotherly love overrides oppression. Okay, so the o override and the oppression he means is anyone that's forming an oppression act or oppression state of mind against blood, brother, they was getting rolled on until the oppression was met with aggression and aggression outruled the situation. This was the brotherly love over overcome, overrides oppression and destruction. But my thing was, this is what the brother T. Rogers manifested in his memoirs. This was all real right and right and exact. His whole format was right and exact. But it was this dude, Omar, <clears throat> that took it upon himself to rewrite, restructure, and cause all New York, the New York brothers and put their lives in danger, man, for mimicking something, man, that they had no business participating in because it's real to these brothers, man. It's something they hold dear to their heart. It's not something they playing with. They're not running around cutting nobody in the face and all of that in California. They're not doing none of that nonsense. So we made a complete mockery and made enemies all over the world and all up the east side seaboard and all to California. But I would like to give flowers to the Bobby Lavender and the T. Rogers because the whole format was real right in the Zach, man. The brother had it down pat, man. And this uh, came about in 1963. So these brothers had this down. And also another brother that I would like to mention in this, man, from the L. Rukins, the Jeff Fort. Jeff Fort Prince was another brother, man, with extraordinary mind. The L. Rukins was formerly based in San Antonio. These was dudes that was against the oppressors, against the police, against the, the powers that may be. These was brothers that fought and died and gave their lives for stuff like this, man. There's very few speak of the L. Rukins, man, but the L. Rukins still live. Felix Mitchell and them with the L. Rukins in the San Antonio Villas. And yeah, these brothers need their flowers, man, because they never got them, man. But they the ones that paved the way for something beautiful that went left by one man because his ideology was based on what he felt that he can do just because no one knew of his, his, his existence. You said y'all used to be pen pals with some of the brothers from California, correct? Right, that's correct. We used to write a lot of the brothers, man, by, by way of freedom of information. Freedom of, freedom of information is called a FOIA Act. A FOIA Act is a hyphenate for freedom of information. It's, it's a law. And so if I request something that's happened to be dealing with political, it has to do with the court system. It has something to do with any city crime. It has something to do with administrative law. It has something to do with miscarriage of laws. I can get this information by way of the court system by submitting a request form for FOIA. So I, we used to be in contact with a lot of the brothers in California, man. And that's how I got in, in, in connection with Bones and a few of the other mother Griff and the other bounty hunters. And they was letting me know, man, it was going on over there, man. It's totally not allowed, man. It's totally a disrespect and a mockery to them. Stay clear of them. Stay neutral, man. We read a little bit of things about you in the Source magazine. So you're a good brother. Stay neutral because those dudes is fool. So, yeah. There's, there is a big beef of discrepancy because this was a sanction. Blood, blood Nation wasn't for New York. So it wasn't for New York? Nah, because New York wasn't ready to accept the culture of that. 
the culture of that was some real stuff. It was it was all the way down, grassroots, hard knock life. You had to kill somebody for violating your hood. When you say the Bloods wasn't ready for New York, they wasn't ready for New York as a city, as a state, or in the prison system. They wasn't ready for a period in the city, the state, and definitely not the prison system. The prison system was more small and more controlled. So you can just imagine the rampant and the fluent of, of the violence and the chaos that was going on with that. And it started from day one, you know, with one person, man, being the floor general and everyone else is, is bucking for a position and everyone is bucking for a, a, a position in the game where they could tell a bunch of people what to do. It got to be completely out of control. It only lasted for about a year and a half before they started fighting and banging on each other, you know, because a power struggle. He didn't want to be told what to do. He wanted to still do the same activities. He wanted to still get high. He didn't want to go by what the laws represented and all of that. He didn't want to pay homage. He didn't want to be a soldier. He didn't want to take a plate. I told you a plate means, man, an enemy. You got to eat him up. You got to tear him up, man. And that was that was part of your deal. They didn't want to do stuff like that, man. They started getting caught going to SHU, giving up their lingo, doing stuff like that. That's when the whole thing turned into a cesspot and went straight to hell. So do you have a problem with the New York prison blood gang or gangs as a whole in the prisons because you did not join a gang during your 25 summer stay? You know, there's, 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 not, there's a distinction between the gang as a whole and the gangs in the prison. The ones that are causing destruction and creating these jobs for these officers and for their kids to come later on in life, man, and to have careers off, off the blood, sweat, and tears of us. Yeah, those gangs is not needed here. Those are not allowed. But, you know, you got the gangs in New York. You got the biker gangs, man. They all been in existence since the beginning of time. They still exist to this day. They're not on the news for riding down on somebody killing a bunch of people. They're not recklessly doing stuff on the train and the subway system and cutting people and, and stuff like that. They're not doing stuff like that. So the bike gangs, they still in existence. And then, you know, a long time ago, the Seven Crowns and the Black Spades and, you know, and these gangs, they wasn't ever doing random acts of, of violence on people, man, committing malicious acts on people, man, destroying the communities, man, having them create, giving the officers new job titles, making more money off, off the hands of us, man. We They supposed to stood for brotherly love, overrides oppression. All gangs should stand for being oppressed by any type of factor that's bigger than them. So how do you feel about brothers like Larry Hoover and them out of Chicago? Because Chicago has a, a big gang, you know, culture. So do you blame New York <clears throat> for taking on the gang culture when it was more of a Chicago and L.A. thing? Yeah. Or do you blame them? How do you feel it about was more, it? It was more a Chicago thing, man. This is where Al Capone and all them dudes came from. This is where the gang motherland originated in Chicago. This is where, you know, with the mafia originated over there, man, and, and, and made it all the way to the east over here. A lot of the Latin king, the, the, the founder and the four founders, is in Chicago. You know, a lot of these El Rukin gangs, a lot of these Larry Hoover gangs, <coughs> these people were from Chicago. That stuff should have been stayed over there, never introduced over here, because the brothers is not ready mentally to embrace what a gang really represents. They barely know what, what it is to be who they are. They still dealing with identity crises in America from the ages of 13 up until 40, 50 years old, man. They still dealing with identity crisis, trying to figure out who they are, how to get in, where they fit in. They definitely don't need nothing to take up on something just because it sounds cool to be blood or it sounds cool to be down. Everybody is waving these signs and, and making these chants and wearing this one color. It's a lot deeper than that, and they wasn't ready for that, man, you know? So let me ask you something. With prison being, you know, so small and everybody having to deal with everybody, whether somebody has contraband, whether somebody is providing another service, a hooch or a liquor or whatever the case went on. So you never really had any dealings with the Bloods or you just avoided that faction as a whole? Hey, see, I didn't join them, but the activities that I partake in has me to frequent them quite often, have me to deal with them, intermingle with them. You know, they like what they call was they late night. You know, late night is smoking, it's trees, it's, it's weed, it's getting hot. You know, and, and I, I used to be in demand of that and I had access and resources to that. So I supplied 
the masses of what they needed, man. And my problems came from them thinking that because it's a hundred of them and one of me, that I didn't deserve to get paid for my services that I rendered and all of that or what I provided. And that, I'll take that as a great disrespect. So it could be 100 of them or it could be one of them, man. They're going to get the same punishment. So I had a few bad in dealings with them. Like I said, they put me on the menu and all of that, man, for foolish reasons. But, you know, I knew personally the big homie SI and God bless him, you know, before he returned to the essence and, you know, and I know a lot of the ones that that, that, that that was the shot callers. And, you know, they let it be known, man. By no means, don't get it mistaken, man. You run up on this brother, which we're talking about me, you better be coming at him right, man, because he's not going to play no games with you. And a lot of them had to learn the hard way. But, you know, ultimately I became not on the menu no more, you know, and I'd have no more problems with them, man. But I analyzed them from a distance and from afar and up close, man. And I see that they had changed the prison system drastically. So the Bloods was trying to extort you. That's what you're telling me. Absolutely not, man. It's not extortion when you when you buy something and don't pay them. That's robbery. So it's they were trying extortion. to rob you. Basically trying to rob me. So how was that dealt with in the prison system? Yeah, well, the one that the one that owed the one that owed me something, man. I stepped to him first, man. I knocked him out, man. That was quick, fast, and hairy. But then you know, there's people that's gonna take exception to that, and so. You know, they, they formed their little Voltron. They made they move on me, man, running around, swinging, throwing punches, you know, stuff like that. Wasn't no weapons involved. It was enough to get locked up. It was enough to cause a scene. It's enough for all of us to be placed under key block status, man, where it's an investigation, where the administration is going to want to know what caused this problem, man. We know that y'all blood and he's not. What caused it? And then when they got behind closed doors, they let it be known. They, they told administration everything. Actually made up lies on me. So you knocked the blood dude out, and they tried to jump you. Yeah, you know basically, what? yeah, it was a, a a free fall, running around swinging. I already knocked the kid out, but uh, you know, few take a few swings at me. I got a few knots on me too, man. That day, man, because anytime you got five and ten people running at you swinging haymakers, you're gonna get hit with something unless you know how to disappear and reappear. So yeah. So what happened after that? Was they put us on key block for investigation. They want to investigate the situation, the administration. What came when out they of that? investigate the administration, they take each individual out and, and privately and they ask them what was the cause of the problem and all of that. If you're true to the game, you'll get out there and you'll be like, yo, I don't know what you're talking about. I wasn't fighting with nobody. Your officer picked me out of random and so on and so on. Take me back to myself. That's the thing to say. Anything outside of that, man, is, is, is assisting and collaborating with the 5 to get one person out of the way so that they don't have to deal with them no more. Three of them went to the administration and told them that I was a God body, that I didn't, I said, I think the white man's devil, that uh, I'm trying to make them bring in weed, that they didn't bring in weed, I was going to knock one of them out. They see him all the time, he's always boxing, he's always training on, the, on a heavy bag and all of that. And his thing was that he was going to make us do this if he didn't. He was knocked one of us out. As you see, he knocked one of them out today. And that lies that was compiled against me had the administration actually believe in that bullshit. And then they actually did give me a ticket and gave me 90 days SHU for that shit. For knocking out of blood. For knocking out of blood. No weapon, no nothing. So what was the repercussions after that? You go you lie. Yeah, up. I'm a guard. I came out of key block. I came out of key block, out of SHU after the 90 days is over. I seen one of them. Or one of them that looked it like him and knocked him out too again, you know, this time and got away with that one. Then we go on our way to the evening child, mess hall, knocked another one out in the hallway. And then we get into a two on one where two of them jump me on one and we get the rumbling. So the administration them put it together and saying, yeah, OK, every time we let this guy Ross out, he's going to knock one of these dudes out and they're going to try to defend themselves because what they did is they lied on him or whatever the case is. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pack him up. We're going to move him out, man. They just PK'd me, put me on the draft, packed up all my stuff, man. And they sent me to, uh, I went to uh, Comstock from there. What does PK mean? PK means a pack up. It's, it's abbreviation for being just packed up. You could be in the infirmary. You could be out on a visit. You could be uh, at program. They'll just go in your cell, pack up all of your shit. So they take you out to prison and transport you that day, or do they put you in lock up there before they transport De you? Depending on how serious nature the allegations was or the offense that took place in there, you get packed up right now, put on a bus, 
stem through these back ways or, 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 or West Bubblefuck, New York, or over that, and you'll be en route to your next facility, man, in less than a half hour. Do they tell you where you're going? Absolutely not. But I guess you know from the doctor. No, you know you're going somewhere, but you ain't going home. But you're not going to be in this jail. You're going to another jail somewhere. Yeah, but do you know what jail you're nah, going to? No, you're not going to know or what they jail they don't you. tell you when they nah. transfer you? Nah, they, they ain't even talking to you. They not even talking to you. You get one or two that's real cool to pull up at McDonald's and get and grab you a burger and fries. He's like, yo, I know you ain't had this in a long time. And, and, and spring for it and buy you a burger and fries. Like I said, I met a few cool officers. You know, in transportation like that, man, and so on, man. That they, they had a heart, man. They knew what it's like with a with a Big Mac and the fries would do for a brother that's been in jail already for ten years. You know, and I appreciated those guys too. But nah, they not telling you where you going. You're not coming out of the cuffs. You ain't coming out of the shackles or nothing. You be right there in that bus till you roll up to the facility. You know who be you? Who's gonna know where you at first? You gonna know where you at before anybody tell you. You'll know. Because you're rolling up through the big gate, the 80-foot wall gate, and now the door's open. You look up and around, okay, I know what jail this is. This is Comstock, or this is Elmira, or this is uh, uh, Sing Sing, or, you know, whatever. So you was transferred a lot. Oh, yeah, I've been in every prison, man. Hmm. In New York State. In New York State, yeah, except for the medium ones, you know. During them 25 summers. During them 25 summers, yeah. My classification, man was too high, man, to be down there with those guys that like uh, uh, snatching chains and all of that stuff. So I never was able to make it to one of the medium spots. I, when I did go to Cape Vincent, man, that was a nightmare. But that was the only time late in my bid around 96, 97, when they decided to lower my classification because of good behavior in the prison. God 